All right, it's time for another Jim and Fridge video. This time it is Jake Paul. I don't know, let's see how this one goes. I honestly don't have high hopes, but we will see. Welcome to the Taj Mahal. Come on, man. Let's check it out. What do you always have? This is so funny. This is like that, uh, you know, the, the jokes that they make about fridges where it's just like a bunch of drinks and nothing else. And you can tell that the person doesn't actually like cook or like live there. Uh, you know, you can tell like a rich person fridge where like, you know, they just use this fridge for storing drinks and then they have someone else make their food. And, you know, like this is not actually <laughs> indicative of how they eat. But we also always have this Wagyu. I'm a big, big steak guy. This is like five, six pounds of Wagyu. You see the marbling there? This is like real Japanese Wagyu. Filet Angus. And we always got our ginger shots and then our ketone shots. I'm actually gonna have one, maybe two actually. Mm. Okay. <laughs> ketone shots is a very funny idea. I don't actually know how legitimate this is or like whether or not people actually use this. Ketones are a thing that your body can use for energy, but realistically, they only do this when you are in ketosis. And ketosis occurs when you have a very small amount of carbs coming in every day, typically less than 50 grams of carbs per day. So what you're talking about here with a ketone shot is basically just, okay, like, it's just an energy drink, kind of, but... You know, it, it's it's an energy drink that you could use if you were somebody who was maintaining ketosis by your diet. And he, I would guess, is not doing that based on, again, just the contents of his fridge does not look like he is maintaining a strict keto diet. So there is probably no real benefit to this. It's probably not really doing anything for him. Uh, you know, I, I don't really get the idea here. I think, you know, maybe he, he doesn't really know what he's doing here. Right now, I still have 15 pounds to lose in the next 20 days, but it's really basic. It's not that hard. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Eggs, potatoes, steak, chicken, fruit, yogurt, all the necessities. What's your morning routine? He's not wrong there in the sense that obviously, you know, just in general sense for general health, it's good to be eating a lot of whole foods, a lot of good protein sources, a lot of stuff that is minimally processed. So yeah, I mean, you know, he's just listing off a bunch of foods. Like, obviously, if you're looking for weight loss, then you obviously also want to be cutting out excess calories. You know, obviously just eating these foods on their own is not going to do very much in terms of weight loss, unless you're also managing your overall calories. But I mean, you know, he's got his head in the right place here. He is talking about some of the staples, some of the things you should rely on uh, just for general health and potentially for weight loss as well. Sometimes just like a chicken sandwich. So you get a little mix of protein and a little bit of carbs to get me ready for my second practice. And, and there's nothing like to be clear, there's nothing magical about this. He's basically just being like, yes, I ate a meal that contains some protein and some carbs. Great. That could be anything, right? It doesn't have to be chicken sandwich it just is what it is it's dinner time and pretty much dinner is like any choice of meat whether it's chicken or steak what about vegetables i don't i don't eat a lot of vegetables i don't know if i really believe in the vegetables oh okay i see you have a ton of fruit in there yeah so the fruit is really good for like a pre-workout snack so if i'm feeling low on like sugar and glucose because that's what your muscle burns when you're working so obviously when it comes to veggies, he's wrong there. There are obviously a lot of health benefits of veggies. And in particular, veggies are very highly nutritious. They're high in fiber. And also because they're high in fiber, that also means that they are low calorie. And obviously if you're talking, you know, like him in this situation where you're trying to cut weight, then obviously that is a benefit because when you're eating a lot of veggies, helps keep your stomach full, and that means that you have a much easier time of things. At the same time, yes, he's also eating a lot of fruit, uh, you know, by his own admission, and fruit accomplishes a lot of the same things. 
very similar to a veggie. Fruits are high in fiber, they're high in nutrients. They also have the added benefit that they have, you know, basically some sugar in them. They are delicious, they have some carbs. So a lot of people will like fruits a lot more than veggies. And there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of sugar in your diet, especially not when it comes in the form of fruit. That is, you know, certainly nothing to be afraid of. Working out, have like a fruit bowl right before practice. So that's super, super helpful and gives me that short burst of energy for like 30 to 45 minutes. So big fruit guy as well. It, I'll add to this that what he's talking about, you know, okay, you get in some carbs before your workout. That is a good thing. When you have some carbs in your system, that can help in terms of regulating your blood glucose. And that can make it easier to keep your energy levels high throughout a workout. At the same time, is fruit necessarily the best way to do that? Probably not, because with fruit, again, like I said before, you're eating a lot of fiber. And when you have fiber, fiber takes a long time to digest, it fills up your stomach. And so that could potentially disrupt your workout a little bit, especially if you're somebody who is really prone to having digestive issues as a result of working out. Some people do. So realistically, what is better for a workout is to have some quicker digesting carbs. Obviously something like a Gatorade, something like even like a soda, you know, like something that is going to be very easy to digest, good amount of carbs, and so on. That said, it may not really be terribly important. Depending on when you work out, if you have generally been eating carbs throughout the day, for example, and you get in a workout later on, chances are that yes, You've got carbs in your system already, you don't need to worry about it. Maybe if you're waking up first thing in the morning and working out without any carbs in your system recently, then yes, that could be an issue, right? It's very highly context dependent. You don't necessarily always need to get in carbs before a workout. And also it matters a lot more when you're somebody who does super long workouts, say for example, you're an endurance athlete or exerciser. And so you probably don't need to worry about keeping your blood sugar regulated super well, simply because it's not gonna be too important, not too relevant to you in particular. My go-to comfort food if I'm not cutting weight is pizza. I just love a good Hawaiian pizza. I gotta say, it's a complete misconception that pizza is always going to be unhealthy. You can absolutely make pizzas that are very healthy. Nowadays, they do sell things like pizza dough that is high protein, and you can combine that with something like a high protein cheese and some kind of high protein meat. So, you know, maybe like some chicken or like some specialty pepperoni or something like that. And you can get a pizza that is extremely high in protein and pretty healthy for you overall, especially if you are careful about, you know, like not using a ton of oil to cook your pizza. So realistically, there's not necessarily anything wrong with pizza on its own. You can enjoy pizza and still have a very healthy meal if you do it the right way. When I'm in camp, I'm not drinking protein shakes just because we actually don't want to build muscle. We actually need to come down in weight. Replenishing the muscles with protein right after working out is gonna grow them. We kind of just need them to like stay where they are and focus more on burning, burning fat and becoming. So this is incorrect. The thing is that when you are cutting weight, and he's talking about, okay, I don't want to necessarily be building muscle. I want to be retaining muscle. The fact is that when you're cutting weight, you actually need more protein, not to build muscle, but to retain muscle. That is the whole reason why you need to be inputting a lot of protein when you're cutting weight. So talking about, okay, you know, like I'm not going to be, you know, using protein shakes. I'm not going to be getting in as much protein while I'm cutting weight. That is actually the complete wrong way to go about that. And it means that he's probably losing more muscle than he needs to every time he cuts weight, which is obviously hurting his competitiveness in the long run. What's your snack strategy? When I'm cutting weight, there's no snacks after dinner. Occasionally, uh, I have these bellinis here, which is like the little pancakes for caviar. I concoct the best caviar dishes. Bellini, creme fraiche. Lots of creme fraiche, lots of caviar, chives, onion, a little bit of egg yolk, and then agave. On that was such a weird aside to just go for a while about how he loves to make himself uh, his caviar. Like, come on, man. All right, that's it for the fridge. Gonna hit the gym, set over. How often do you work out? I train twice a day, five to six times a week. Uh, on Saturday is just like a five mile run. 
The first session is always boxing, drills, sparring, hitting the heavy bag, jumping rope, all the boxing stuff. And then I come back later at night either to the track or I come back to the gym to do strength and conditioning. So this is actually, I would say, pretty smart. So when we talk about training, we have basically two kinds of training. We have what you call specific physical preparedness and then general physical preparedness. And so specific physical preparedness is when you're actually training for your sport itself. So in his case, boxing, right? And then you have the general physical preparedness, which is gonna be building the general fitness that supports that special fitness, but of course is not the, you know, the thing itself. And so that for a boxer is gonna be like the strength training, the cardio, et cetera. Likewise, this will change from sport to sport. So say for example, you take somebody who is a power lifter, obviously their specific sport training is going to be lifting heavy weights and their general training is going to be all kinds of other stuff, right? So it does shift a lot from sport to sport and just depending on what the specific physical demands are of that sport. But it's generally a good idea to do specific, highly skill-focused training in separate workouts from your general fitness training because they can interfere with each other a little bit and potentially decrease the effectiveness or the quality of your workouts a little bit. So the fact that he's doing you know, like his boxing training in the morning, he's doing his general training in the evening or whatever the case is, that's actually a pretty good strategy. Now, training six days a week, is that necessarily the best strategy? Well, yeah, it's very tolerable. It allows him to get in more work. And again, he is a specific athlete who needs to train really hard so he can do that. Obviously, it's not going to be ideal for probably your average everyday person who probably doesn't have the time, who probably doesn't have the energy to work out so frequently. And then, of course, they have to be a little bit more cautious about just basically how they structure their training throughout the week so that they ensure that there's not too much overlap. When you're talking about somebody who is accommodated to this, somebody who has the time, who has the energy, they can certainly progress really strongly. And obviously the more working out you can do, the better. So this is actually a pretty good athletic routine that really supports his goals. Do you ever worried about getting injured? Injury is always a lingering thing, but thankfully, knock on wood, I have a body that doesn't typically injure, unlike my brother. The, this is actually a thing. So people do have different dispositions to injury. And in particular, people who tend to be good athletes also tend to be people who are pretty resistant to injury, which of course makes sense if you think about it, because obviously if you're somebody who gets injured pretty frequently in response to training, in response to whatever, you know, you're probably going to be, you know, experiencing a lot of setbacks, needing to do a lot of recovery, and, you know, you're not going to be able as easily to continue to progress and grow as an athlete. Conversely, again, somebody who is pretty resistant to injury, they can just, you know, they can just keep going, they can just keep training, keep getting better. And so that is one of the important qualities of a good athlete is basically just their ability to be resistant and resilient to injury. Do you do anything special to warm up? So I'm big on warming up, 10 minutes walking on the treadmill, and then a lot of just dynamic stretches, dynamic movements, getting my knees ready, my hips ready, opening everything up. I do cartwheels and handstands. Cartwheels? <laughs> this is probably my favorite, the Kaiser Air Machine, super functional. So he's relatively correct here. A warm up is a great idea, especially if you're somebody who is you know, like doing a you know, like a sport, a kind of training that involves a lot of agility and a lot of movement, especially you know pretty rapidly. You know, basically, it's a, just a good idea to warm up. It reduces your injury risk and it you know makes you get a better workout in. And you know, I know that the video here is saying, oh, you know, handstands, cartwheels, not necessarily the best you know like warm up method. It's not necessarily anything wrong with them either. It's you know basically a movement that will help you warm up, and it's not the worst thing in the world. In boxing, you're not trying to build a ton of muscle and like be in these like static weight positions. Everything's like fluid and off balance, and you're all in these different positions. And so the Kaiser is really good to just work and build explosiveness and he is correct on this as well a lot of people think of combat sports boxing as being about strength right you want to be able to hit harder it's actually not necessarily about strength which is the ability to produce a lot of force relatively slowly 
It is about explosiveness, which is the ability to rapidly generate force. And so explosiveness is often more related to agility, more related to endurance than it is necessarily to strength. Certainly strength is involved, but you do need to train a lot of endurance. And he is very smart on this in terms of, okay, you know, I can't just necessarily train with weights the way, say, a power lifter or a bodybuilder might. I also need to train, you know, the specific movements and I need to train explosively because that is what he needs to do in his sport. I would say my favorite exercise is the Saturday runs. Just being out in nature in the beautiful neighborhood. I gotta say, man, I'm a little bit jealous here. You know, I love the idea that you could go for a run in a nice neighborhood. I go for a run in London. Uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's very hilly. Uh, you know, not not necessarily great to go for a run around here, unfortunately. Motivation comes and goes. Some days I'll be excited to go to the gym, but most days I honestly don't want to go to the gym. But since I want to become world champion, that's what I focus on above all else. This is a very, very, very important lesson. I think a lot of people think of, you know, people who succeed at sports, at fitness, etc., as people who are highly motivated. Very often, it has nothing to do with motivation on its own. It has a lot more to do with the external systems and pressures that you put in place that force you to keep going. So, for example, you take somebody who, you know, says, oh, yeah, like, I'm definitely going to try and you know, like get better at, you know, the gym or whatever. And they put no, you know, like nothing on the line. They put no systems in place. You know, they go for a few sessions, they quit, right? When you talk about somebody here like Jake Paul, he knows that his entire lifestyle, his entire career depends on him continuing to get into the gym. So he has all this pressure where it's like, okay, if I don't hit this workout today, that has knock-on effects through, you know, like everything else that, you know, makes up my lifestyle, right? So that pressure, that forces him to keep going into the gym even when he doesn't want to. And I would say that it's the same for a lot of pro athletes and so on. There are people who rely on fitness as a living so they don't have the luxury of skipping workouts. So, of course, they are going to show up to the gym and they are going to work out even if they don't feel motivated. My biggest challenge with working out is the thousands of repetitions and, and getting the 10,000 hours to become world champion. I, you know, Bruce Lee, I, you know, don't fear the man who's practiced 10,000 different kicks. I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. Repetition is the basis for practice, for learning, for improvement. And that's really the tough thing, right? The tough thing is not getting into the gym today, no matter how hard you make that workout. It's coming back to the gym day after day and continuing to train, continuing to get better over time. That is the tough part. The tough part is showing up consistently over you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years. That is what matters more so than any individual training session or how hard you push yourself on any individual training session. You know, nothing else matters. What really matters is getting in consistently. The jab, the right hand, the hook. Boxing is the hardest thing I've done. And after boxing, everything else in life is, is easy, to be honest. If you could work out with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Ooh, I would work out with Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, that's it. I'm done. Y'all need to get out of here. All right, I gotta be honest. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised here. This is honestly a really solid plan. Obviously, I think that he's got a lot of folks behind him who are guiding him, who are giving him a lot of assistance. He's got, you know, coaches and and so on. So he has a really, really good system going on here. I was actually not expecting that. But at the same time, he does have some maybe a little bit of weirdness, a little bit of misconceptions with diet, especially around the protein. He also has the fact that obviously he is a rich guy who is, you know, got habits he's got methods that are maybe a little bit out of the reach of the average person talking about your caviar and your wagyu here and there right uh you know not necessarily something that you and i can replicate but i mean honestly pretty solid i don't really have too many complaints i would honestly give him an a maybe an a minus a few few weird bits here and there but overall i think he's he's got it he's he's in the right place so that is all for this week's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe, smash that notification bell. Let me know down below what you would like to see in future videos. I will see you all next week. Have a good one.